All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our women-owned business webinar featuring some amazing women from the local businesses here in Corona. Um, this event is a partnership with the Corona Chamber as well as the City of Corona. Um, we are really excited that they are joined that they are joining us this morning, and hope that you all take each um, that you each take all or that you each take something away from this um, amazing program this morning. Um, however, before we get started, yes. I just wanted to give a nice to few short announcements. The first announcement is our Coffee with an Entrepreneur program on April 13th. This is going to be featuring the amazing Amanda Kalkanis. She is the owner of Over the Moon Escape Rooms and founder of OBC Theater. Um, Amanda is a wonderful actress um, with a love for all things theater. Um, and she really wanted to um, have a chance to start um, OBC Theater um, when she was um, a little bit younger with her mom. Um, a great story there. Um, since then, it has really grown into a striving production company. And Amanda has branched out into creating a more hands-on experience with Over the Moon Escape Rooms. I've went there personally um, several times, and it's a really great experience. Um, she's an amazing entrepreneur, and we are really looking forward to hearing more of her story. So register now for April 13th. You can scan the QR code um, and that will um, send you over to the registration page or just call here at the chamber and we can uh, handle that for you. The next um, program that we wanted to invite you to is our April 20th, Good Morning Corona. Um, this will take place on April 20th at 7 a.m. at Eagle Glen Golf Club. Um, it's going to feature our annual state of the county update from Riverside County Supervisor Karen Spiegel. Um, we are definitely expecting this program to sell out really quickly, um, so please get your seats now. Um, we do have just a few sponsorship opportunities as well as exhibitor spaces left, so please scan the QR code or again call here at the chamber and we would be really grateful to help you. So earlier I shared about this program being sponsored in partnership with the city of Corona. Um, the chamber and the city work really well side by side together to help businesses succeed. Um, so it is my pleasure to welcome Amanda Wicker from the city of Corona um, economic development team. Um, she's the economic development administrator over there. And Amanda has a real passion for the business uh, community. Um, we are really honored to have Amanda here today um, to share a few um, topics of interest. Um, so everyone, please welcome Amanda. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, well, good morning, all. Thank you all for joining us today. Happy Women's History Month. Um, we're uh, really excited um, to be sponsoring and partnering on today's um, panel discussion. I'm really excited to hear from today's um, speakers and panelists. I think it's going to be really insightful and inspiring. And so we're really happy that you're here. Um, as Anthony mentioned, I am with the City of Corona's Office of Economic Development. Um, and we're here to support your business. Uh, we have a variety of tools, resources, services, and partners that we work with in order to be able to better support our businesses and help them thrive and grow. Um, one particular uh, event that I, I would like to encourage you to uh, participate in is our Growing Your Business webinar series, which kicks off next week. You can see some information on, on the screen, and I'll also be sure to include the, the chat to the website for more information. Um, this is in partnership with uh, SCORE Inland Empire, and it's a six-part webinar series that's really aimed at helping our businesses um, take their business to the next level. So um, there's a variety of topics that will be covered, business assessment and goal setting, um, finances, managing resources, a whole slew of um, really good information for you. It's completely free to participate. Um, you can participate in all sessions or pick based on which topics are are mo more uh, desired by uh, you and areas that you'd like to grow in your business. And um, as I mentioned, I'll be sure to include the information in the chat box, along with my contact information. Um, I'd really like to encourage you if you have any questions, if you're doing business in Corona, if there's areas that you're looking for assistance in, would love to chat with you more about that. So I'll include my information in the uh, chat box and looking forward to today's discussion. Awesome, thank you so much, Amanda. Um, so um, to get started, um, I would like to introduce our panel of local business owners. Um, they will be answering, answering some pre-submitted questions um, and then take some um, questions from the audience if we do have um, some extra time. 
Um, we have Kathy Armstrong. She is the CEO and partner of Do With American Manufacturing Company, LLC. We have Dr. Alia Rodriguez, CEO of Corona Norco United Way and owner of Alia Rodriguez Independent Advising, as well as Dr. Joanna Talla, owner of Healthy Lifestyle Consultant and Coach. We also have a very special moderator for this morning's program, the amazing Sophia Brooks. Sophia is the president and CEO of Global Learning Partners Incorporated, and she is also a business owner, author, executive coach, and a highly acclaimed speaker. Um, we are really thrilled to have all of our speakers on here this morning, as well as all of you in attendance. Um, it's going to be a great program. So without further ado, I wanted to pass it over to Sophia and uh, have her take it away. Sophia? Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Anthony. It's my joy and my delight to be here this morning as your moderator. My goal is to make sure that you're comfortable in the environment, both the panelists as well as the audience, so that the environment is one that we can have some takeaways. Make sure that you commit to yourself right now that you're going to take away one or two or three of the wonderful information that will be coming from our panelists. In an effort for you to engage with the conversation, let me ask you to check your uh, emojis. I call them emojis, but I think Zoom called them reaction buttons. So let's see if we can get some applause with your emojis this morning. Some hearts, some hands up, some thumbs up. Go ahead and test, thank you, thank you. Testing out your emojis. That's wonderful, love the hearts, love the applause. Thank you so much. Lots of familiar faces this morning. We have a huge audience, so thank you so much for being here. Let's go ahead and get started. And as we do that, I'll ask the panelists to briefly, as we start our discussion, to give us some information about their backgrounds. And we'll start with Kathy. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Sophia. Good morning, everybody, to the panelists. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Kathy Armstrong from Do It American Manufacturing. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Anthony. Um, uh, I just uh, I started this business uh, with my husband and a couple of other partners 15 years ago. Uh, this is definitely a dream come true. Um, I immigrated from Iran uh, in the Middle East when I was 15 years old. I had to learn a lot, overcome a lot of obstacles, uh, got a good education here, definitely le living the American dream. I'm a mom of two, and uh, one of my big hobbies are snow skiing, so that's where I'm heading next week. Hopefully, I won't go get lost in all this snow and mammoth. Thank you so much, Kathy. We wish that we were going, some of us wish that we were going with you. So we'll move to uh, Joanna, our panelist. Hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Dr. Joanna Tala. Um, I am the owner of Lifestyle, a healthy lifestyle consultant and coach. I opened this business here in California two, um, two years ago. And um, I moved to California from Connecticut. So I am very, very happy to join you guys. I was uh, in the medical field and I decided to move into health and wellness because of some events that occurred in my, within my family. So I am very happy to have this business. It's a joy to be able to go deep and understand people's root causes and assist them from there. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we'll move to our next panelist, Alea. Hi everybody, Alia Rodriguez. Uh, I am the owner of Alia Rodriguez Independent um, Advising. And so my background is uh, educationally, I have a background in psychology and human development and also public administration. I have am been married for 18 years. We have two children. Um, I've worked for different sectors, local government, private sector and the nonprofit sector. Um, so it's given me a unique position to understand 
the three different sectors and how they intersect together and to be able to provide services to the community um, through my business um, with ARIA, but also as the CEO of a local nonprofit organization. And I'm really excited to be here and, and uh, hopefully contribute as a newer entrepreneur uh, to the, the people on this call. Thank you so much. A round of applause with your emojis for the speakers. Round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. As business owners, we're faced day to day with challenges and uh, difficulties. Research shows that, yes, all business owners have challenges. However, women have different challenges and they have more challenges than our male counterparts that are in business. So let me ask the panelists, and we'll start with uh, Alea and then Joanna. What obstacles or challenges have you overcome during your career path? Okay, so I had a feeling you were gonna start with me, Sophia. I was ready, I was ready. Um, you know, because I'm a newer entrepreneur, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you throughout my career, some of the two of the biggest challenges that I think I've had. Um, one of the first challenges I think I've had is just an immense amount of self-doubt is just trying to figure out, am I good enough? Can I do these things? Is it okay? Um, do I really have something to offer? Um, and can I really do these things? And I think a lot of it is, as a woman, I think is psychological um, because a lot of times we have a mindset, I believe we have a mindset of, we're happy to be here, we're happy to provide services, um, and we're just you know grateful for those things. But then when it gets into business and charging for services or for goods, I think we have to get out of our own minds sometimes and just remember that we do have a value. We do have a service that um, the community can benefit from. And so part of that is that. The second obstacle that I think that I've had um, is being stereotyped as a relatively younger Hispanic female. I think there's been a lot of stereotypes um, and I can't say for certain, but I think there's been stereotypes that I can feel. Um, walking into a room or talking to people that I think stereotypes can help shape and form uh, the perception people have of me and what I can offer. Um, and then moving past that would be to talk about my experiences and my education. And then they realize, oh, okay, maybe I judged a little bit too quickly and a little too, too soon based on just a, a brief, um, a brief meeting. So I think for me, those have been probably two of the biggest challenges that I, I think I've encountered so far. Um, and then I'll, I'll, I might have a little bit more later, but I think Joanna's probably got a lot too. <laughs> okay, thank you. Joanna. Um, oh yes, hi. Um, challenges that I've had, I think mostly what most of us have had, I would say um, the past two years, it's been pandemic. And so really getting clients and getting patients was a challenge. Um, just overall making this decision was a challenge as well because it's, um, it's a field which is not very conventional as most might know. And then um, in a time when uh, we had such challenges, health challenges, pandemic, people not comfortable, you know, opening up or even meeting others. This has been the greatest challenge so far, I would say for me, right? Um, and it's just now we're getting, you know, more comfortable with, with our health and with, you know, getting out and meeting each other. So yeah, it's three years in the making and it started off 2020 when the pandemic hit. So um, yeah. That's the most challenge I've had so far. Yes. <laughs> and not particularly as a woman, but in general, as, um, as business owners, how to uh, navigate these difficult times. Yes, thank you both so much. Let's continue the questions along this line that uh, surface surrounding stereo casting or stereotyping. And we'll start with you, Kathy, um, because you're in a non-traditional business role for a woman, we'll ask Kathy and then go back to Joanna. What have you, or have you experienced any professional stereotyping or negativism? So, um, yes, I starting from the beginning because of my education, I did study IT, computer science, graphics, and then moved on to master's in business. Um, I always worked either in IT, um, 
and higher management positions in medical device uh, companies, and then now in manufacturing. So I've always been surrounded by a very male dominated um, industry where a lot of the females were just either at the front office or they were assistants. So um, I took that as a positive thing where um, I always worked hard and tried to shine and did not let, um, I honestly, I think it's the attitude a lot of times where, um, you know, you can experience barriers or negative stereotyping, or you can turn that around and use it to your advantage. I think I got a lot of respect uh, for being a professional woman and knowledgeable and earning my seat at that table, either at a boardroom or traveling um, around the world, um, just helping other businesses and uh, doing great at what I did. Um, um, having said that, I remember when I was in graduate school and uh, working two jobs, it was difficult. Um, I wasn't seeing, I wasn't doing any of the fun things my friends were doing. I was stressed out. And I had friends and family members say things like, why are you working so hard? Why are you doing to your, this to yourself? You're a, you're a woman, you're gonna end up being a full-time mom, just quit. You don't need to finish grad school. And that just motivated me more to show them that no, it doesn't mean that I can't be a mom and be a professional or uh, nobody can take that education away from me. So my answer to them was, I didn't want to argue. My answer to them was, that's fine. I want to become an educated mom. Um, so that kind of put a stop to what what the negative negativity was around me. But also, I think what's the most what, what's most important is your mindset. Um, I had a very clear purpose. So with that purpose and that vision, I had a vision of what I wanted to do, what I wanted to be, and um, with that purpose, uh, I try to stay very focused. So the purpose, the focus, and the vision is uh, the reason I am where I am today. And I was telling my 17-year-old daughter that um, it's important to have that vision. And I told her that I'm living a life where it's beyond the vision uh, that I had when I was back in high school or college. And I'm just beyond excited for all of that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, yes. <laughs> Sophia? Yes. Hear me? Oh, okay. So the question is if I've experienced professional barriers or negative stereotype. Yes, um, that's the question. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, in the medical field, as most of you would know, there's a lot of females these days and this day and age. So in terms of uh, female um, stereotype or negative experience professionally, I don't think I've experienced that or I've simply not noticed that what I would say I've experienced is maybe a black medical doctor in on, you know, when I was working with hospitals, you get to um, be perhaps classified immediately as someone who cleans or someone who, it never ever bothered me actually. It didn't bring my spirit down. I would either do something if the patient asked for me to do something. Um, I would either, I was able to do it if it's quick, I'll, I would say, okay, I'll get, I'll get you the right person to do this. And then they would say, oh, what are you? And I would say who I am and they would be sorry and excuse themselves. So, I mean, in terms of that kind of negative stereotype, I don't think I've had it, but I would say I recognize this is that field. There are lots of female nurses. There are lots of female doctors, female uh, and means in the hospitals and in the medical system. So um, per se for females, no, I have not experienced it. Another thing is, I might just not be paying attention to that. I, I, <laughs> I know I'm a female, I know I'm a minority. I, and you know, even in the medical field, we, we females are still minorities, not start to say we are not there, that we are a minority compared to our male colleagues. So I take it, I come in with that mindset. I know already that we're somewhat, you know, uh, on, on the, uh, 
minority side and also I'm in a field where I'm going to be considered like most people who look like me are doing different things. So I take that positively. I stay strong and true to what I do and chuckle sometimes. So um, the advice I'll give is if there is that kind of a negative, if there's that kind of a stereotype happening, rather than being upset, maybe we can pre preset our minds or pre prepare ourselves for things like that. We are only humans and we will make mistakes sometimes too. And if yeah. we see it in the light, it tends to be positive. It tends to bring joy to the person who even made the mistake. So yeah. most of the times I experience positive with this. So I, I think the mindset is important. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is a big conversation, a wonderful discussion. Let me ask the audience, as you think about this discussion, go ahead and write on a scratch pad any other questions that you may have about this particular discussion. And if time allows at the end, then we'll ask you for those questions. So all three ladies, if I could ask you to respond to this question, and we'll start with Kathy, Alea, and Joanna. We'll go in this order. Uh, will you share with the audience what you do for personal and professional development? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, for development, it's, I just say yes to everything. <laughs> no. <laughs> I say any any learning opportunity, uh, I'm not af afraid to tap into something new that I'm not familiar with and learn. Um, I have trusted advisors, uh, mainly females who have come before me and paved the way um, and I look up to them and I do wanna uh, give a big shout out to Miss Sophia. Uh, Brooks, our wonderful moderator today. Uh, she's been a great um, advisor and a friend um, and an advocate, uh, which I absolutely admire and learn a lot from. So always reach out. Don't be afraid to ask. Um, I also joined professional organizations. I was part of Vistage for five years. And then, um, but just to be careful when you uh, you uh, select an advisor or a, a group to join, uh, be picky about it, make sure that they're honest and ethical. Um, and um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Alea. Okay, so personal and professional development, two, two different buckets for me. Um, I think I'm gonna piggyback off what Kathy said. Um, I have always been someone uh, likewise, who's been just to jump in things that I don't understand, things that are, I'm afraid of. Um, and things that other people and organizations are afraid of, because I feel like um, if there's something that people are afraid of and no one wants to do it, why not become the subject matter expert into it and learn it myself? Because in that process of learning something new, you learn a lot about yourself. Um, and so I think being the yes person with, within reason to be able to say, I don't know how to, and humbling yourself to know, I don't know everything and I need to figure out where my weaknesses are or what new things are around me. Um, I read a lot, a lot of articles, and I read a lot of books um, to develop myself. And I like to read things that challenge my mindset um, because, you know, we kind of think we have things figured out sometimes. And then you, I like to read things that are very challenging or have a different worldly perspective on them because I'm only a small little grain of sand in this huge world. And there's so much more to, to learn from. I do look at different opportunities for like certifications. Um, I have a ridiculous amount of I don't want to say unimportant certifications, but just, just things that like I was certified to roll fingerprints. Cause I was like, well, that would be, cool. why not roll fingerprints? And then now I'm a certified domestic violence counselor. And then I was, you know, so just different things. Cause I'm like, wow, that's really cool. But I have found that all of those things that I am open to kind of contribute to the sum of who I am. And they kind of have been able, I've been able to use those little skill sets here and there. So I think it takes humility. I think it takes a fearlessness to learn something you don't know. Um, and to be open to feedback and to surround yourself with people who challenge you as well and challenge your mindset in, in a healthy way. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, I, I think um, both, both other speakers have already, you know, covered most of what I do as well. So I do professional, I'm, I'm, I belong to a professional organization and they have 
I have belonged to two actually, and we have yearly conferences and that's really strengthening. Um, we learn the new, new things or new research that are arising in that field. Also, uh, I, you know, I go to conferences and I do, I do take certifications as well. <laughs> I have a whole bunch of certifications that actually they increase the, the, uh, my ability to perform the job that I do actually. Um, also, I read a lot of literature. I, le I read books and then I, I read books in the field, but I also read other kinds of books that are enriching, for example, psychology type books, um, experiences, people's experiences and histories, things that enrich character, I think, <laughs> and I believe they do. So that's the way I, um, I you know, keep up professionally and develop myself. I also listen to business owners. So I, I joined a business and networking group and this actually totally helps when you listen to what they've gone through, their experiences and what challenges they are also meeting, even though in different fields. This actually helps me as well professionally and in the business field. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, so much great information. Round of applause, happy faces for the audience. Let's see that coming in from the audience using your emojis or your reactions. We've got a heart coming over from Bobby. Jill, let us hear from you. Lynn, wonderful. Thank you so much. Great content. Let me uh, ask uh, Dr. Rodriguez and Dr. Tala with reference to grants and women-owned business certifications. Will you talk with us a little bit about those, if you've experienced those in any way? So I, I don't have experience with uh, grants uh, personally with, um, for my specific business on the nonprofit side, definitely with grants, um, being able to understand how to read a grant. Um, this is what I can offer the audience is understanding where to find grants, how to read and understand a grant, asking questions if you're not sure if you qualify for a grant or not, because sometimes we read things and we just, we're subjective to what we think we know and it might read differently. So asking the questions because it might be, you might be qualified and you don't realize it because of one word that you misinterpreted. So I think always ask the questions, um, sign up for newsletters um, so that you can keep a prize and get information coming to you. I know one resource that has been great for me and it's not necessarily for grants, but has been the Inland Empire Women's Business Center. Um, they've been a really good uh, tool to help with um, business development, how to make a business plan, how to get connected with networking opportunities, how to understand legislation and how legislation might impact your business, how to market, um, legal ramifications, and maybe some resources for lawyers that might need to help you in some aspects of your business. So I have to defer to uh, Dr. Tala for maybe the grant component of things, um, but that's what I can offer in terms of, of what my experiences are working with some of the resources in the community. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I will say that the Inland Empire Women's Business Center contact information is now in the chat for those of you that want to do some additional follow-up. Uh, thank you for that resource. Thank you for your comments. Dr. Tower. Yeah, actually, um, I haven't uh, I've applied for grants <laughs> myself. I didn't get them, but um, they are there. I am aware of Galaxy Grant which, um, which helps business owners. I am aware of small business administration grants. I don't know, it, it, they need to be checked regularly to see what's um, available. And then there are the AMBER grants for women, AMBER grants for women. Um, these are also grants that are available for, mostly for, I didn't meet the criteria for certain of them, but they are available for new business owners and especially um, either minority or women, actually. Um, another resource that I used was National Association of Women Business Owners, um, the Inland Empire. I don't know if that's what uh, Dr. Rodriguez mentioned before. Is it the same organization, NOABO? It's called in, in abbreviated um, words. So. That's what I've used and it's been very, very helpful for me as I started the business. I, they, they helped me with the business plan, a lot of education, almost free. 
everything was almost free and, and the financial aspects of everything. It, there's a lot of information and a lot of webinars that are available through this um, association. So it's a very, I will highly recommend that for anyone who is starting a business. Thank you so much. For me, will you repeat the first three that you said? The first three for the grants? Yes. Um, yes, there is Galaxy Grant. And I know there's a women component is a grant part for women, for business women. Uh, Galaxy, G-A-L-A-X-Y Grant. Okay. And then there's a small business administration grants that, you know, you, you, they have different, different sub grants that can fall under that and different time available availabilities would differ depending on the, um, the sponsors. Then we have the AMBER grant for women, just A-M-B as in boy, E-R grant for women. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. You're welcome. If we could see some red hearts for the uh, panelists right now from the audience hearts from the, for the <laughs> panelists. Thank you so much. Great discussion. Let me ask uh, Dr. Rodriguez and Dr. Tala if you would talk a little bit about balance. I know that uh, as I look at the faces here of the business owners in the Zoom discussion this morning, we've all asked this question, how do you balance? We are parents, mothers, sisters, daughters, we have nieces and nephews, we have a life. And so how do you make it all work? How do you balance? And we'll start with you, Dr. Rodriguez. Okay, thank you so much, Sophia. I think we all kind of started nodding in affirmation. It's such yes. a good word, right? I think the first thing to keep in mind is that um, as women, we have such high capacities. You know, it's, it's women that can, you know, you can carry your kids and your groceries at the same time, still be on the phone, like doing things, paying bills, writing emails, going to school, mowing the lawn, uh, taking care of the animals and still trying to get like a 20 minute workout in. So I feel like women just have an extremely high capacity to do things first and foremost. I preface that, or I start with that preface because I do think two things for me have been very imperative for balance. Um, and the first thing is every day is a constant reprioritization. I might think that everything is going to be like, oh, here's my regimen, here's my schedule. And that really doesn't work because the days change every single day. You know, if a kid gets sick or a meeting comes up or you have to adjust things, you think you have to be flexible in your schedule and reprioritize on a constant basis. That's worked for me personally. But the caveat with that is making sure that you have a built in support system. I think that is really, really, really important when you have your hand in so many things. And like you said, you're trying to keep a marriage alive. You're trying to raise kids. You're trying to have a household. You're trying to have any kind of social scene, uh, physical health, mental health, and running businesses. I think it's important to have that support system, whether it's family, whether it's friends, uh, church community. I think it's important. I have been very blessed to have a very good support system of people that, you know, if I need to change something, I can call somebody to help me. Um, pick up my daughter from school because it's very hard to, what do I do? Do I go to this business meeting and, you know, make my child wait at school or do I, like, what do I do? And so I think that, that, that reprioritization and that support system, I think are really, really fundamental. And if you don't have family that lives here, I think it's important to um, build that network. And I'm just speaking on behalf of women. I don't know if this is everybody or this is me or this was me, but you can't be afraid to ask for help either. You can't think that we wear our capes every single day, that you can just do it all by yourself every single day. And I've learned now and where I'm at in my life is if I need help and I can't do it, um, I need to be able to ask for help for my support groups or support systems so that I can uh, succeed in, in the aspects of my life that I've built. Thank you so much. That's amazing. And I'm so happy at the end that you added that to ask for help. We can ask for help. We mm -hmm. do wear those capes and we do believe that we can do it all. And in many cases we do it all and then not give enough attention to our, the health and wellness for ourselves. So thank you so much for that, uh, asking for help. Dr. Tala. 
Yes, I will piggyback on Dr. Rodriguez's um, social network. Having social network is important. I think it's been very useful and helpful. Um, I normally would pre-plan, I would say plan, 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 uh, make a to-do list, be realistic with the plans, and, um, and then don't be afraid to change the to-do list. I mean, if you have certain things that are going to prioritize and shift things accordingly, you know, things happen, life happens. So yeah, um, I would prioritize things as they come, but I have a pre-plan already. So I know who I can get at what point if I needed them or, but if the situation arise that I need somebody of a sudden, then I would have to, to pre-prioritize to prioritize at that point and put in social networking call in help when I need help. So yeah, um, that's what I'm gonna to add to Dr. Rodriguez's suggestions. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I would invite the entire panelists to respond to this question. And Kathy, we'll start with you and then uh, Dr. Rodriguez and then Dr. Tala. Will you share with us, share with me and the audience suggestions, um, advice maybe, recommendations for leading and running an effective business, a successful business? Great, that's a great question. And I do wanna thank the, uh, my fellow panelists. I just took some notes uh, from the last question. That was, I loved it because the are things we struggle with on daily basis, I appreciate that and being transparent. So um, going back to tips to effectively run a business, for me, uh, the most important thing and the advice that I would give everybody, and I hope that I live by that well, is um, having high integrity in both your workplace and personal life. Um, it, it just, it's immense. And I feel like both um, workplace and personal life, especially as an entrepreneur, they intervene, it's just all the same. Um, my second uh, uh, my second go-to is always uh, choosing the right team and picking people who are smarter than me. Um, so I always like to pick people who are smarter than me and I can learn from them. Uh, it's not intimidating, I think it's empowering. Um, setting high standards uh, for your culture, setting the right culture to begin uh, as a start and have core values that mean something to you and your team, uh, where it's not just a piece of paper on the wall or in some booklet, it's something that you review and you talk about all the time and you make sure that uh, you maintain that culture and your core values. Um, to us, at least our business, it's been huge. Um, be consistent, always be consistent and uh, be compassionate. Uh, life happens, uh, we all, we're human. So just have that compassion and care about um, your team and, uh, and the people surrounding you and the people who are supporting you. And last but not least, um, effectively run a business and be successful. I do wanna again, give a big shout out to this time to the Chamber of Commerce. Um, so I go to them for uh, advice, uh, just being a member and also a board member, uh, being on the board. It, I learned a lot and uh, it's helped me in so many ways to run the, our business um, smoother and more effective. So I do appreciate all their support. Thank you so much. All right, so building on what Kathy said, and I can testify that in Kathy and John's business, they do have their values. And I fell in love with it. I've seen it a couple times now, and I love it because it's so honest and real. And so it kind of is a reminder. I would imagine employees walk by and it's like, oh, there it is again. It's not just a piece of paper on the wall, it's something to live by. I have three things, and I agree with everything Kathy said. I think first and foremost um, is an incredible amount of self-awareness and humility in yourself. Um, and it takes a lot to do that. And, and why that's important for effective business is because that affects how you treat people. That keeps your ego in check. That keeps your mind in check. That keeps you hungry. That keeps you hungry for success. 
it keeps you moving forward in a direction, but I think it takes immense amount of self-awareness to do that and a constant evolvement of the self. I think the second thing for me is strategic planning and having some kind of plan in place of where you want to be and what your goals are realistically, and even some dream goals of how you, and, and what is the roadmap to look there. I think it keeps having a plan keeps me from going down a rabbit hole or chasing business rather than, okay, I'm supposed to do this, but these people want to pay me to do, no, that's not even what I do, get back on track. So I think that's also important is to have some kind of a strategic plan of where you want to be and what your business is to look like for now in the future. And the last thing I think for effective uh, business strategies um, is don't get stuck in the way things have always been done. Um, it's a pet peeve of mine to see businesses that are always just, well, we've always done it this way and we have to keep doing it this way. I don't believe that that's true. I think there's some good fundamentals and I think there's a way to meld old school and new school, but the world is changing so immensely fast with human capital, with technology, with strategizing, with all these different things that if we get stuck in what was done and we just keep doing it that way, we're never going to progress forward. And so we got to be um, current with the times and what the current needs are and demands are in the community that we serve. Thank you so much. Yeah, wonderful points. I totally agree with all of those suggestions. And I'm just going to add a point or two to that. I think staying positive is a very important and key uh, attribute that I use. Um, you know, stay positive, even recognize when tough times come along and there will be tough, tough times and there will be down times. Um, take these as challenges or, or put these challenges as opportunities to learn and to grow and to adjust accordingly. You know, so uh, whatever challenges comes by, look at it as an opportunity and you know, think through it and see how you can grow from there and learn from that. So on top of everything else that has been said and suggested, I agree, planning, staying positive and accepting challenges as a learning opportunity. Thank you so much. Such a huge amount of such valuable information this morning. And I, again, want to applaud and thank our panelists for sharing their experience, talent, and knowledge with us. And I'd like to, as thinking about all the things that they have said, and that's a great, this last question was a great way to wrap up our discussion this morning. And I'd like to leave the audience with what I will take away from this discussion this morning is in running my business, Feel the fear and do it anyway. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Thank you so much. And you're back in the hands of uh, Anthony. Thank you so much, Lithia, and to our wonderful, wonderful panel. Um, you all provided some amazing insight and we are just really um, grateful to have you here this morning. Um, so with that, we do have about 15 minutes left. Um, I want to open it up to the audience. If you have any questions or comments that you would like um, to ask or tell the panel, um, please feel free. Um, when you are ready, you can unmute yourself. Well, good morning, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Just want to thank our wonderful panelists and the Chamber of Course for co-sponsoring with the City of Corona. It's very inspiring to hear not only your journey, but to hear the lessons that you've learned along the way. So fantastic event, fantastic chat this morning. If I could ask each of you, if there is a specific quote, book, someone that has really inspired you along the way, if you could share that with the rest of us. I have two. <laughs> I have two. Um... And both have to do with character. Um, I think my favorite quote, one of my favorite quotes that I, I live by every single day is a quote by Maya Angelou. And it is, um, she says, people may not remember your name, but they will always remember how you made them feel. And if you really stop and think what that means, that is very much a tall order on how do you make people feel when they're in your presence, when you're doing business, when you're just at the grocery store, Everything is about people and how you make people feel, how you show up. They may not remember, oh, Aaliyah was 
she was rude. She was snotty. She was whatever. And then after that, they'll get a chill when they see me and it's not a good chill. It's a bad chill. So I think that for me is the, what inspires me every single day is like, how do I show up and make people feel? And that requires an incredible amount of self-awareness. The second one is uh, from the Bible and it's Matthew five sixteen, And it talks about being the light for people um, in a world of darkness, in a room of darkness, in places of darkness. I try to make sure that I'm always living up to that word of trying to be a light for other people, whether it's helping people, showing people, growing people, um, my family, my friends, my coworkers, just how I show up as a human being. And then everything else kind of, I guess, builds off of those two things for me. Great question, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Tala. Um, yes, I, I would say live life simply and be truthful to yourself and to others. That's one. And the second one is kind of a prayer and I don't really want to, I don't have the exact um, quote as it is, but here's the message. To be able to know what challenges you can change, to be able to recognize things that you cannot change and to know the difference between it. You're nodding, I'm sure you remember Sophia. Yeah. Yeah. But to know the difference between what you can improve and what you cannot change and to live by that, to be true to yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you. Kathy. Uh, so I'm going to repeat, I'm gonna go with our theme from the Women's Leadership Conference last year because I just loved it and it made a difference in my life and it's take charge. And uh, is this just a superhero uh, theme that, you know, you can do this, take charge and just be who you are. And uh, you're just stronger than you think you are and you're more capable than you think you are. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Jessica, does that help? That was excellent. Thank you. I think we could all benefit from those words of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Anthony. Thank you, Sophia. Any other questions? I think Kathy kind of touched on this earlier in terms of talking about how um, mentorship has been an important part of her life. I was just kind of curious. And I mean, I think I, I generally would guess that most of you kind of serve in a mentoring capacity, but could you talk a little bit about um, either how, how a mentor has impacted you or how you're now maybe mentoring to the next generation? Okay. I can start. Dr. Tala. Okay. Yes, I am I have been mentored by somebody I find really amazing in the field that I've just joined, the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. And it's one doctor who has a clinic in um, in Riverside lifestyle medical now his calm and his you know collectedness the way he approaches patients with such sympathy and kindness and you know I he's he's been he's been mentoring me <laughs> I work with him we collaborate but I I get so much from his uh, leadership from his trailblazing it's also a trailblazer in his field where he insists that um, the way we live does determine our health. So, you know, he's just a great mentor for me. And I have, I, I am also a, um, a teacher, if you will. I, I teach community colleges. I have done that before, and I hope to do that here in California. So it's a great thing for me to pass on whatever knowledge and experience I've had in the past. So I love mentoring um, students and young, you know, aspiring medical doctors and just give them the experience I have and, and the joy I find in the field uh, in the field I am in. So there you go. Dr. If you want to know the name Dr. Dysinger with Lifestyle Medical is a very, it's a great mentor for me. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you. Yes, I've had both male and female mentors and uh, they both, they, you know, they, made a big difference in how I uh, world, my career and my, my life and planning. 
Um, again, I think I learned calmness. Um, you know, when you work with a lot, it's called experience. When I didn't have the experience and I would panic if something in the world of IT would go wrong and and my my supervisor would just say, hey, it's just another way we'll get through it. Um, so, and then, um, you know, with Sophia helping me with public speaking and um, some other uh, business advice, um, you know, she's been there, done that, and I trust her. Um, and then now I feel like um, I do have a lot of people from work come to me and asking me questions and wanting me to mentor them, or I get text messages from young entrepreneurs, um, oh, can you check this out? Or what do you think about this? Or how do I get this started? And sometimes I have to pinch myself because it's like, wow, like, um, I guess I'm doing something right because um, I have other, you know, people coming to me and asking questions and, and um, going back to self-doubt, which Dr. Rodriguez was talking about earlier, it's, it's a little bit of self-doubt where it's like, am I qualified to give advice? But I, you know, it, it's just a combination of growth and experience and um, it's, um, it's been great. Thank you so much, Kathy. Anthony. Thank you. We have time for just a few more questions. Anyone else? All right, seeing as we have one second. Okay, yeah. Okay, so seeing as we have no additional questions, um, we are gonna end just a few minutes early. Um, I wanted to, again, thank our amazing panelists of speakers. They did a great job and provided a lot of insightful information. So again, thank you. Um, as Sophia says, everyone, a round of applause for our speakers. Awesome, thank you guys so much. And again, I wanted to thank all of you in attendance. Um, you really uh, really showed up today. And um, as I mentioned, um, right before we started um, this webinar, we are recording and we will be posting it on our YouTube page, um, on our Corona Chamber YouTube page. Um, so in just a little bit, it will be up. Um, so um, with that said, I wanna again, thank you all for coming. And um, I look forward to seeing you at one of our either City of Corona events or Chamber events. Um, thank you all so much. And our meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. You too.